Hello, hello everyone. Okay, well, I think our session is uh, ready to start, so I'll go ahead. And if there are any issues, please let me know, and then I'll stop speaking and we can restart. So thank you very much for coming and welcome to the discussion on industry academic collaborations to achieve the sustainable development goals. My name is Marie Kammerlo and I work as a policy advisor for global engagement at the Technical University of Delft. I'm very pleased to be moderating this session. Horizons India has invited five speakers from the Netherlands and India to share their perspectives on this topic. We will be discussing, among other topics, why industry academic partnerships are important, what complementarities exist, and what's needed to make them work. In its partnerships, Delft University of Technology, T Delft, the oldest and largest technical university in the Netherlands, aims to bring impact for a society. As a result, collaborations between T Delft and Indian counterparts, both academic and industry, are important and growing. As Uni University, we believe that partnerships involving both academic and industry players offer an opportunity to constructively work together towards solutions and to ensure the implementation of new technologies for a better world. As a reminder, please turn your mics off when you're not speaking. And for those in the audience, if you have questions, please do write them in the chat box. We'll try to address them at the end of the session. Without further ado, I would like to ask each of the five speakers to briefly introduce themselves. Ajit, would you be able to start, please? Thank you, Maria. Um, my name is Ajit Patai. I'm the founding partner of Embiome Consulting and Management Services, which is a for-profit entity focused on large-scale, sustainable, and profitable transformation. Embiome's focus is on integrated, circular, local economies. I have been involved over the last six years with the World Bank in building India's model of centers of excellence, which has a strong industry academia element. Embiome's access is not on the large industry, but on the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Embiome has been anchoring the Quintuple Helix Carbon Neutral Wynard program with a focus on doubling farmer income, which engages in the context of the environment, the Kerala government, the local government, the academia. I've had the privilege of working closely with Udell, Groningen, and a number of universities, both in Kerala and the rest of India. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajit. Aravind, would you now please introduce Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Aravind. Uh, I'm a professor of, uh, of the Chair of Energy Conversion at the University of Groningen, but I'm also very much involved in, in setting up uh, a carbon neutrality program, uh, a partnership uh, with, with, uh, with um, uh, an initiative in Kerala, in India. And uh, my, my uh, research is basically on uh, high efficiency energy systems and, and clean energy systems. And in this context, uh, neutrality programs are, are, are very well aligned. And additionally, I'm, I'm uh, involved in uh, hydrogen-related activities, especially in maritime sector, and also uh, in, 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 uh, in developing uh, concepts for uh, efficient wastewater treatment. For example, as a part of the Lotus program, the Lotus project is a project uh, headed or led by Edel from the Netherlands. Uh, and um, IIT Delhi from India, etc. So these are some of my, my primarily focused on technology, but also looking at uh, technology and society in about Great, thank you, Aravind. Sakit, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Thank you, Murray. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is Sakit. I'm an assistant professor at Delhi University of Technology. Uh, my relationship with India goes long way back. As you can see, I'm an Indian. I graduated from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, with a Bachelor's of Technology in Civil and Environmental Engineering, um, and then moved on to do my PhD. Uh, currently, uh, I'm working at UT Delft as a hydrologist and water economist, uh, mostly focusing on interdisciplinary problems uh, linked to sustainable development goals. Uh, you can see me as a quantitative modeler who brings in uh, my expertise in quantitative economics, understanding people and their relationship with water systems, uh, be it whatever kind you can think of. One key project that I'm involved with respect to India is a major project led by Solidaridad Asia in India uh, on cotton water. 
and where they are, what we are looking for is sustainable, scalable solutions that can help farmers adopt best practices and achieve a sustainable livelihood. Very much linked to sustainable development goals. Thank you, Mary. Great. One of the questions we have but I'm going to invite uh, Priyanka to join using the uh, grab the mic function. So I hope Priyanka, you'll be able to introduce yourself. I believe it will take a moment to work. Um, am I audible? <coughs> Hi, Priyanka. No, wonderful. Thank you. So yes, I am a professor of introduction. Uh, I'm a faculty member, associate professor here at Indian Institute of Technology in New Delhi, where Saki just mentioned he graduated from this place. Yes, I'm a faculty member here. I work for Center for Rural Development and Technology. And primarily, I'm being in the area of biofuels and carbon neutrality, being a part of, uh, as Professor Arvind uh, talked about, the Kerala project. So we are working uh, as, as, as a big consortium to uh, bring in carbon neutrality uh, in, in the state of uh, Kerala. Other than that, being a part of the Center of Rural Development and Technology, we are uh, very deeply involved in development activities of the community and keeping a sustainable development goal at the very core of our, our center. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Rianka. We have one more speaker. She's also informed me she's had some technical difficulties. So we'll go ahead and move on to the first question, and hopefully she'll be able to join and introduce herself after that question. So the first question I have is, what are the most effective models and modalities for industry academic interventions to increase sustainability in India? And what does this bring back to the Netherlands? Aravind, would you like to start this time? Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um... I think if you look at uh, industry um, uh, academia collaborations uh, in India, I think it's important to note that uh, the, the, the pace of technology development uh, is, is changing and it's actually getting faster. So uh, in, in the past, probably uh, one technology uh, time to uh, well, uh, took 20, 20, 25 years uh, to, to measure and then probably um, uh, in the business for the next 20, 25 years, and then, of course, something else replaces it. But that's changing. And tend to science and technology development is, is becoming faster. And, and new technologies are getting introduced uh, quicker. So uh, actually, the industry needs to work together uh, with academia, where very often the technology development starts. And that's very important. And especially if you look at a country like India, where, uh, there are development challenges and large-scale initiatives are required. I think it's very important for industry uh, to, to collaborate with academia and partnerships are built and, and that's that's actually my take on it. Great, thank you very much, Arav. And I see Tanea has been able to join us. So I'll ask Tanea to introduce herself and uh, then we can get back to the question. If you want, Tanea, you're welcome to already start answering the question about modalities for industry academic interventions to increase sustainability as well, or you can just introduce yourself and then we come back to you. Thank you so much, Maria, and apologies for the delay. I was having trouble uh, connecting uh, uh, to the event platform. So my name is Tanea kuznekov bakin an assistant professor in urban design, theory and methods uh, at the Faculty of Architecture in the Built Environment of TU Delft as um, a research leader for the section of urban design in the Department of Urbanism and a research leader of the Delta Urbanism, which is an interdisciplinary faculties uh, at U Delft, especially the Faculty of Architecture and, and the Beauty Environment, Faculty of Technology and Management, and Faculty of Civil Engineering. Uh, in relation to India, I'm, um, um, I'm the principal investigator and the uh, and the research coordinator, especially of the Dutch consortium, part of the uh, um, Indo Partnership for Urban Water Systems, which is called the research program, it's called Water for Change. And it's one of the flagship programs of the Indian uh, Netherlands collaboration on sustainability. Uh, we started the project in uh, 2019 and the project uh, will last until 2024. And we, ha we are focusing on uh, the development of sustainable and resilient solutions, especially for urban water systems, especially focusing on secondary cities in India, but in particular, uh, also especially the envisioning uh, frameworks for the design and governance of uh, socio-ecological developments in cities. 
uh, I perhaps I can already uh, answer the first question. And uh, we have also through the project actually Water for Change. Uh, we have been focusing. Uh, by the way, we we have more than forty academic uh, uh, partners uh, uh, involved in the project, and uh, we have been focusing a lot on the aspect of sensitivity of water sensitivity. And actually, what does does that mean? It's about the, the idea of situating design and technology. So, a situation. How do we approach the development of uh, technology and processes by means of design? Uh, which means actually to work on the relationship between uh, new, let's say, innovations in terms of products, technologies, and processes in relation to their context. So to uh, do it in such a way that it's very much, uh, let's say, close to society, to culture, on site, uh, to avoid maladaptation of, of, let's say, of the development and badness of, of such, let's say, innovations. Um, so to bring very much uh, 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 new, uh, again, new technologies and processes in close relation uh, uh, to, let's say, places in which they will be embedded. So, um, so, and also in that sense, as much as possible, circularity of material flows. So the idea is to, let's say, to downsize uh, processes and to get closer to the places and cultures where they will be embedded. Great, thank you very much. Okay, I was going to ask Ajit if you'd like to speak now. <clears throat> thank you, Maria. You know, uh, some things have uh, very fundamentally changed in the world and in India in the context of climate change and the pandemic. Uh, and I think the sooner we realize it in the context of industry academia partnerships, the better it is. So what is it that has changed? I clearly see a shift from the linear to the circular. I see a change from uh, chains to webs. And therefore, academic silos move to converging webs. Industry academy partnerships moves to continuous spiraling engagements and of co-development rather than linear development and transfer. In the models that I've been working in Kerala, um, I call it the three P's. Uh, the three P's being a process transformation, a process transformation in local governance to facilitate a circular economy. Uh, the second is project transformations that lead to local economic development, LED. Uh, and the third is product innovation that enables process and project transformation. Uh, I see in this context, the industrial academy of partnerships actually uh, uh, changing quite dramatically. Uh, Arvind uh, has talked about uh, what I call the, the classic model of industry academy of partnership, which I also call the figure of eight or the 15% uh, academy model, which really engages 15% of the academy, both students and faculty. We have 85% of the uh, industry uh, of the academia that is really not engaged in this industry academia partnership. And that becomes my focus of what I'm going to be talking about. I call it the balance card or the Z model, uh, where this is of most relevance to the micro and small industry. These small industries are interested in the here and the now and are willing to engage continuously. Can a cabinet work shoulder to shoulder to help redefine their top line economics, the top line, or redefine their costs? If the academy can help the industry to do this in the here and the now, then there is a partnership. This Z model has not received the attention that it requires in the context of the circular economy. Finally, uh, you know, the 15% I talked about, the classic model of industry academy of partnership, and the 85% are really not mutually exclusive. In fact, there's a beautiful spiraling flow between the two. The Netherlands experience of continuous collaboration, rapid translation into the practical and dissemination is what India can really benefit from. Great, thank you very much, Ajit. Priyanka, would you be able to weigh in now? Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, of course, I, I will take it forward from where I just left. 
that, uh, especially if you look in terms of, I mean, of course, about the relationship, how the models are there, the various model Ajit has, has talked about from his experience, and why it is important. Why is it that we are talking about it at this moment of time? So if they look at uh, the climate change, everybody's talking about it. So it's, it's a, uh, and the country, India, for that matter, had made a very ambitious commitment where we are saying that we will reduce our emissions by 30% from the level that we had in 2005. It's a very, very ambitious target that the country has uh, put for itself. And to achieve that, uh, you know, it's like we all have to converge. We all have to come together. The circularity would need to be in place. The innovation has to be in place. Uh, the new fundamentals need to be discovered as well. So for that, it's very important that uh, the fundamental knowledge, the R&D uh, 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 resources, which are there in academic institution, should marry very well with the needs of industry. This is one way uh, by which certainly we could accelerate a leapfrog in terms of uh, what we have set as target for ourselves as a community, as a country. All of us, everybody is a partner here uh, uh, in the climate change mitigation technology. So I certainly see that, uh, and it is happening. It is happening maybe at a slower pace, depending upon in where we are placed, what are our realities, what are our constraints, what are the resources. Everything needs to be uh, to be weighted in. But certainly there is no denial that uh, they can they can take separate part or they should not collaborate. You know, this is high time they must collaborate. And some collaborations are happening. Even academic, if you look at it, Professor Arvind talked about uh, the project that we are doing. Ajit also talked about the project that we're doing in Kerala, which is. It again is a very ambitious project, right? Here and we are talking about converting the entire community into a carbon neutral community, and it needs a lot of, uh, you know, it needs to be approached from all angles. So industry, of course, there are plenty of industries on board as well. So I'm seeing this is happening, which is a very positive change. And I certainly look that it should be accelerated. If we are planning 2030 as our target, which I see, I mean, just today in the newspaper, um, uh, there were articles saying that, uh, you know, it's very challenging to achieve it in the uh, the time that we have set in. But even if we push it forward by a couple of years, given that, you know, we were hit by, we were marred by this pandemic, it is achievable. And it is not possible until unless, uh, you know, we have this very collaborative effort from both ends. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Priyanka. And Sakit, would you like to close up this question? Thank you, Murray. Um, I think uh, a, a fantastic initiative that, that we have in Kerala. I'm also involved uh, in that, but perhaps I can uh, shift the gear towards towards uh, more closer to the farmers in different contexts. Uh, cotton water project that, that uh, we uh, are involved in as well, uh, uh, to delve in partnership with uh, Solidaridad Asia, uh, kindly funded by uh, the Dutch Enterprise Agency. And I think what we are seeing there, what is important is to first understand the value chain. Um, who are the real beneficiaries, and then uh, interventions, who would be paying. Often the beneficiaries are, like in our case, farmers, poor farmers, are not ones who would be paying it. Um, partnerships. Uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm considering industry uh, as a w wider set of, of industrial partners, so uh, we are closely collaborating with NGOs, uh, and NGOs such as Solidaridad Asia are very critical in this process. Um, because they are the key, uh, let's say, socket in which industry and academic partners can come and they have the experience of, uh, long experience of working with uh, farmers in India, for example, uh, and, and, and trust, which is very important for adoption of any interventions, uh, is, is where they play a critical role. Um, yeah, beyond that, I think we are quite used to, industry is quite used to, also academia quite used to, uh, promoting technologies that we are happy with. I think it's important to understand the cultural landscape, uh, adoption of technologies by stakeholders, by, by your key uh, beneficiaries is important in our case, farmers. Uh, so we should need, to, uh, we, we perhaps need to understand local embedding of technology, uh, let's say in culture, uh, so, uh, local psychology uh, before we push uh, new solutions. Uh, so in that sense, uh, where with the help of NGOs, led by NGOs, where industry and academia could come in, at least academia, not just uh, technology, but also critical thinking in, okay, which type of technologies would be adopted? Uh, uh, how can we fit in existing successful business uh, models that are out there? And, and that's where also technical schools can come in uh, and, and, and help the industry and, and uh, interventions uh, for wider adoption. Uh, how, uh, what, what is it that, that makes uh, what has been successful in India a success? 
and learning from the successes, we can always come up with innovative business models that we can always talk about uh, in the following sections, uh, questions. Great, great. Thank you for all these perspectives. I think we have a lot already uh, on the table. So you will address a lot of the elements that are upcoming. So the changes in the society that also make these industry academic collaborations all the more important. Um, given that there are important, it's not always without hiccups. So we know that there are also challenges to working together as industry and academia. So the next question I'd like to ask is, given these challenges, what criteria are needed to make industry academic collaborations a success? I know we spoke already about uh, circularity, about including the local context, about asking the important questions, but maybe we could dive a bit deeper in this question. So this time, uh, if you don't mind, Priyanka, we'd like to start. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, the challenges I uh, see is in terms of whatever solution, the innovations that are happening, uh, it should be aligned. That means there should there should be some relationship between uh, what is the need of the industry or what is the need of the society, as Saket just said. It's not just industry, academia, community is equally important. The community participation, either in terms of NGO, civil society, whatever it is, it's good that we take all of them together, right? So yes, uh, whatever solution that we are designing as an academician or we are innovating as an R&D institution, it's important that uh, it, is, it is aligned directly or matched directly to, uh, to some use or to some need. That is one. Second is it should be a time-bound uh, project. The delivery should be like, for example, I mean, if you look at the vaccination that has been developed, which is very timely, right? So these are the kind of, it has to be time-bound. And second, the economies uh, need to be taken care of at what cost we are designing uh, the solution. So these three things are a challenge. Sometimes the solutions are there, but it's just that they are fundamentally available with the academic institutions. They're, it's doable, but then at what price we have developed it or at price the technology is developed and the product that has come out of it is, uh, is of not that value. You know, the, the, the amount of resources that has gone in developing it, maybe it's X price, and uh, the product that we have developed in international market, the price of that is one tenth of it, then there's no point in developing uh, such a product, right? Because the market out there is very competitive, you have to survive there. So take it, considering price is very important, taking the community is very important, and the need, I think is very important, that whatever we are innovating, it should address some of the uh, stakeholder in, in, the, uh, in the entire uh, community or in the entire uh, the development purpose. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Priyanka. Ajit, would you like to weigh in? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I will for follow what Priyanka has said, but I will respond from the shoes of the MSME and the farmer. I think everyone here is an academic. Uh, I think I represent that. So, um, you know, academia, what, what needs to be done? I think academia needs to knock at the doors of the MSMEs. Let us face it. Walking into a university with big gates, flights of steps, long corridors is totally unfamiliar, absolutely daunting for the MSME, leave alone the small farmer. We need to do something very, very simple to make it work. Really, really simple. I think the first thing that we need to do is how do we actually get friendly, easy to get in touch? Uh, the second is to get the MSME uh, don't wait for them. Let the academia get to the MSME. The third point is start with saying that we don't know. I think that's a wonderful place to start. But maybe we can work out something together. I think there is too much of, um, you know, I come in from the background of consulting and we walk in with the people who know. I think it's a great place to start that we don't know. Fourthly, as we both don't know, we can work together quickly and help you in the here and the now. Um, academy does not think business, very often does not understand it. I think it's time that we throw away the theory, roll up the sleeves and be useful in the here and the now. Great. Thank you for that, Ajit. Asakit, would you like to add? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Marie. Uh, I think um, um, the major roadblocks uh, are often uh, uh, linked to not understanding the local context uh, and local culture. 
based on my experience uh, working closely, being an academic, and I think academicians should just stick to their role of, of critical thinking um, and, and not lead processes of change. But, but given my uh, experience working with NGOs, uh, and I'm talking in context of farmers, so we're talking about sustainable livelihoods for these farmers who cannot afford to pay. Um, often it boils down to uh, culture and, and that to trust. Um, and if, if we always think about, oh, we have a new technology or if we have a new solution um, and let's just push it down uh, uh, through uh, business models, uh, which, which, uh, which were not, uh, let's say, uh, created on the field uh, without partnership of local NGOs, uh, it, it is bound to fail. So what, what I'm hinting, hinting at is, is I think trust, especially in Indian culture, matters a lot. Uh, so one needs to write on long partnerships that have always been there on the ground. That said, uh, what we need uh, in academia, industrial partnership, uh, industry partnership, uh, is a process that is actually led by uh, local heroes, uh, let's say led by uh, local NGOs in context of farmers, uh, who has over long-term non-government organization as a non-government organization on the trust of the farmers, and they become the, the center of gravity, bringing all the other uh, novel ideas from industry and academia uh, because they are the ones who are closest to farmers' pulse. Um, uh, one last thing, I think uh, it's important, and Priyanka touched on it, uh, it's about sustainability. It's not about a project uh, getting it done in five years and moving on. I think we have, one needs to think of scalability, sustainability beyond the project. So one has to really think of, oh, is it just this region for the next five years, or are we delivering impact over the next 20 years? And I think uh, it needs some thinking, some strategy, some roadmap to achieve that. And one key element, again, is understanding the psychology of, of, the, of the end user, here the farmer in my case. Uh, that plays a critical low, role. What, makes, what would make the farmer adopt the interventions that we would like to bring in? What kind of interventions that we would like to bring in? And whether it can, uh, let's say, live on its own if academia industry and partnership goes away. Uh, I think that is another thing that often is missed uh, uh, in, in a pursuit of, of you know, introducing technologies rather than sustainable technologies and solutions. Yeah. Great. Thank you for those points. Aravind, do you have something to add based on your experience? And Aravind, you're still mute. You're still on mute. If you could unmute yourself, please. Or I'll unmute you also. I think I can do that. Thank you, Mary. Uh, so now uh, let's look at uh, partnerships, emerging partnerships between industry in Netherlands and academia in India or academia in Netherlands and, and industry in India. I think what's important is probably expectation management. If industry is starting to work together with, with academia, and if there's a problem, well, uh, it, it, it often starts with a new new line of thinking emerging from academia, probably industry finding it interesting, and industry start investing. And, uh, well, if you, if you look at new ideas, TRL level one, uh, technology readiness level one, starting in, 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 at, at the universities, uh, the chance that they get into, 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 uh, into society uh, and business is, uh, say, maybe three, four, five percent, not more than that. So um, academia uh, industry partnerships, it's very important that expectation management is, is, uh, is properly addressed. And risk uh, awareness is also important. Uh, so uh, some of these projects are born to fail because academia always uh, takes up challenging and, 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 and risky goals. Um, now, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you look at uh, how to manage such a partnership, I think there are emerging models. For example, triple helix uh, partnerships, a government, academia, and, and uh, industry interacting uh, and, and organized platforms for such, such interactions. It's important to look at triple helix models or triple plus helix models where actually civil society organizations also play an important role. Uh, I think it's, it's very important to have structured uh, partnerships and platforms uh, for establishing a, uh, proper partnerships between academia and industry. So that's, uh, that's my view on this. Great, thank you very much, Arvind. And to close up this question, Tanea, would you like to give some insights? Uh, I think most actually was already uh, said, and especially I would like to highlight uh, very close uh, to some of the points that Sak had brought. Uh, I believe the idea of trust as a criteria, actually, it's extremely important. So the building of trust and that comes uh, in actually working on capacity building. Uh, so the uh, let's say the a well again, embeddedness 
of the process development, no, of, of research and development and implementation being one. And so let's say the, the, um, uh, the users and actually not only the users, but the ones that would be then responsible for the practices, they will actually, they will appropriate uh, those technologies and processes. So um, to build trust, it means to actually to bring the end user and the end, let's say, uh, uh, the one responsible for the continuation, for the sustainability, for the continuation of the practices in the future, to bring those actors at the very beginning of the development of the process, let's say, or of those processes and technologies. So I think as an important criteria is to kind of to, uh, to see how can we uh, diminish, let's say, the distance between uh, uh, research and development at in academia and actually what it's happening on the ground. And in that sense, so to increase, of course, crossover, so then let's say the, um, the, uh, the dissemination and the fertilization of ideas between the different actors, I think also that's extremely important. And, uh, and again, the same of this idea of how to sustain, how to maintain in the long term, uh, again, technologies and processes that we are envision, envisioning for the, for the short term and that they are just confined to the limits of the time frame of a project. So how to maintain that. So this idea of trust, appropriation and the sustainability of practices in the future. So to a certain extent, monitoring of processes, it's extremely important. Great, thank you, Tanea. So I think we'll move on to the last question, unless anyone has something to add on this question. No, okay. So the last question is looking to the future. What should be done to further industry academic partnerships for the SDGs? So I think it's quite broad and people have things they want to add. So this time I'll ask Safi to start. So is that me? Sorry, I missed it. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, that I was taken by surprise, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yes, I think, uh, so the way forward is, is always to, uh, would be to learn from the failures of, of past projects uh, and working on, on, on it and, and uh, moving in the right direction. Um, I think it's, it's difficult uh, to build a sustainable partnership uh, between, let's say, Dutch universities, academia, Indian academia, industries in Netherlands uh, and India. So there's, there's distance, uh, uh, you know, there's physical distance, but there's also cultural distance um, that has to be uh, considered. And they are beyond building trust. Uh, there are actors in India that you cannot, you know, uh, control in the sense uh, some certain actions may be taken or certain trajectory of project, it may evolve to that leads to uncertainty. So I think we probably won't be able to uh, control much in what happens in India beyond doing our best, embedding ourselves uh, uh, in, in, the, in the, let's say, a successful business model, successful, uh, need not be business model, successful process models. Um, learning from the, the, uh, the successful ones and, and shaping our technology uh, uh, accordingly. But we can do a lot being in the Netherlands, uh, let's say in academia, we can do a lot in how we can facilitate that. I think where academia can contribute, being an academician, is understanding this uh, aspect of why certain things succeed and why certain things fail, uh, why certain things get adopted and why certain things don't. So the psychology, the effect of culture, the, the role norm, norms play, the role uh, perception of risk of farmers' place in adoption of interventions is key and is where universities can play a critical role. Not just technology, but also critical thinking, understanding uh, the relationship between, say, technology and society. So I think uh, that there's quite some work to be done there, and I, that is a niche area that, that uh, one can uh, uh, think about uh, moving forward. Um, and, and I'll quickly uh, uh, wrap up. There, are, uh, uh, as technical schools, we should perhaps be more open uh, to also spending time uh, and energies to understand the relationship between uh, human and, for example, water systems, human and technological systems, uh, and be more receptive, being critical thinkers. It's not just uh, universities are not just producing technologies, but we are critical thinkers. It's beyond writing papers. Uh, being critical about, uh, uh, let's say, being open about new disciplines that embrace that idea. And I take one example here of social hydrology, where I'm quite involved in. And there are many other couple human water system studies, hydrosocial studies that talk about uh, relationship between human and water, what works and what not. I think uh, 
uh, a technical school should not again just be focused on technology but also uh, how it links to, uh, uh, to to the humans and adoption and i think that that is one key point that i would hit at going forward Great, thank you so much, Sakit. Ajit, would you like to add uh, something now? Thank you, Maria. You know, as I was saying earlier, and I, I think this has been my refrain uh, through this uh, uh, the session, that uh, we we are at a point where paradigms are changing in the context of climate and such like. And when paradigms change, uh, we need to sort of uh, reset ourselves. Maybe go back to zero. Paradigms reset ourselves to zero. Uh, to be honest, I, th I think the 17 interlinked global uh, goals, the SDG goals, is a framework which I must confess I really haven't understood the interlinkages of. Um, that we have a tagline blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all, in my mind, I think is a little presumptuous. I don't think anyone has really got the blueprint and can really articulate it. The accent on local governance, circular economies, local ownership, and local conscience, consciousness is actually missing in the focus of the SDG goals, which I think is paramount and perhaps the most critical thing in uh, what we will call leading out on the Industry Academy of Partnerships. It has a huge bearing on uh, what we define as Industry Academy of Partnerships in this context. Phrases such as efficiency, lead economies, supply chains, patents get replaced with circular economies, spirals, open source dynamic solutions. A total involution is required, which I think is already happening with democratization of education. Local consumption, local economies are focused on giving rather than receiving. Rewrite the economics which had scarcity and wealth accumulation as a cornerstone, with one that starts with generous abundance and the sharing mindset. I, I really see, uh, uh, you know, the, the question that you posed, uh, what should we do to strengthen uh, industry academy uh, partnerships uh, in the context of the SDGs? I think something must very, fairly dramatically change. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ajit. Now I'd like Kanea to speak. Yes. Um, well, actually, I believe that once again, um, I would like to place the focus on the idea of, um, of embeddedness and of monitoring, especially. Uh, I think we should be able to develop, to develop better um, frameworks and processes to actually to continue monitoring uh, uh, implementations at site. And actually, also, that's something that I believe also we, the industry academic partnership on the, having the possibility of access to new, actually to increase the, 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 um, the accessibility to funding schemes in which uh, implementation and monitoring are very much um, highlighted. I also, I strongly agree that uh, I'm also very um, uh, critical to a certain extent to the sustainable development goals, actually how much we can achieve them. And I think it's a step-by-step -step process that we need to have more the possibility of uh, increasing the amount of pilots, increasing the amount of projects which focuses on implementation actions, which focuses on monitoring. So then as, uh, again, we can learn from the mistakes, we can learn the reasons, as I could say, why uh, let's say solutions are not being implemented properly, why they don't work, and that there is a very strong component of that in, in, uh, in relation to governance and management capacities. So in that sense, again, the idea of having, uh, let's say, to be able to foster more, more projects in which we have the possibility to implement and monitor can actually bring us knowledge to improve govern governance and capacity and, sorry, and management uh, processes. So I think we have to be able to be a more, let's say, uh, um, close to conditions at site to test, to experiment, to have the opportunity for more experimentation, and then learn from actually what, uh, in this process of experimentation, what actually, what are the su success and what are the failures again, and in that sense, build up knowledge into design, governance, and management frameworks. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Tanea. Now I'd like to ask Priyanka to give your final thoughts, please. 
Thank you, Maria. Uh, so the perils of being the last speaker is that almost all the points are covered by uh, the former speakers. But quickly, if I have to uh, uh, kind of an, uh, add up to, I think what has been missed here is uh, training and capacity building we talked about, but training is equally important, especially when we're talking about decentralized applications. So at the end, when we're talking about decentralized applications, uh, the last stakeholder or the final or the last mile connectivity where humans come in, it's very important that we train in whatever we have innovated that means there is a new component to it. And no matter how trivial, it may appear to us that it's very simple, it's, it's very obvious, but I think training is very important to train them about uh, whatever we have developed. And uh, one last point that I would like to mention here is, uh, as Ajit said, uh, start from the fact that we know nothing and keep pressing your reset button. Start from the very beginning, assuming that we don't know anything. That is very liberating. When you, when you know that there are no risks, there are, you know, your slate is absolutely blank. You start fresh with new ideas. That is very important. So yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Priyanka. Our event, I'd also ask you to speak. So you have the last word as well. Uh, our event, we can't hear you. Let me unmute you again. OK, great. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, so thank you, Mary. Uh, I would like to stress once again the importance of structured partnerships and and uh, learning from uh, 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 learning from successful uh, initiatives. And um, so structured partnerships, I mean, for example, uh, 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 triple helix partnerships or, or quadruple helix partnerships, where and industry, academia, government, and civil society organizations have uh, uh, have organized. Um, uh, opportunity, organized interaction opportunities, that's really important. And if you look at, um, uh, for example, um, the, the change is taking place in North Netherlands. Uh, one of the largest natural gas fields in, in Europe is completely stopping natural gas production and thinking of uh, and considering large-scale hydrogen transition. And this is managed with, with the close support of, of a triple helix partnership between government, academia, uh, and, and, and the industry. And if we extend uh, such a, such partnerships with, with civil society organizations, probably that's that's a way forward. And that's that's my my take on this. Thank you. Okay, great. If anyone from the audience would like to put a question in the chat, we have two more minutes. But I, as I'm seeing if there are questions, I'll try to wrap up a bit and say what I've understood from the session. So I think the thought that most came to mind was the idea of critical thinking and critical learning. So as academia industry partners, we really need to start at the beginning and think critically about what works, what doesn't work, and not just make assumptions. And that kind of leads to what are these partnerships? So for industry, we need to think beyond just a, a bit traditional business. We also need to think about small local players. We need to think about NGOs. We need to think about different models. So Aravind, you just mentioned the triple helix. So all, all of these models are very important to making industry academic collaborations for sustainability a success. Um, I think the biggest theme I've heard throughout the session is about the word local. So in so many contexts, local governance, local training, local trust. So really, you need to look at the end user. You need to look at the uh, location and the users of what you'll be implementing as an industry academic partnership to see their needs and really to have them as a guiding force. So they'll also be a partner. It's not just a government, industry, academia. It's really the local partners that then will be able to ensure that a project is embedded and sustainable beyond just the five-year time limit. Um, and of course, there were lots of other interesting points. I think, uh, Professor Priyanka, you mentioned about making sure that you match needs, that projects are time-bound, or Ajit, you mentioned so many wonderful concepts about uh, uh, circularity, about changing models. So I think all of the interventions were extremely valuable. So I thank you very much for this uh, rich conversation. And we have maybe half a minute left. If there's anyone who wants to say anything or anything from the audience, I didn't see any questions. Um, but I'm open to receiving questions after the conference. And uh, I don't know if you are also open to receiving all the speakers. If anyone has a question, could they contact you directly? I see some nods, so I think you can get the contact yeah. information via the conference platform. And it seems that our time has elapsed, so this is a message, but we're welcome to stay. Maybe some of the speakers do need to go, but if any of the attendees would like to say something quickly, I, I think that's okay for my end. If anyone needs to leave, of course, that's fine.
Okay, I don't see anyone asking to grab the mic. So from my side, I think that's all. But I really enjoyed the session. And thank you all very much for attending and for speaking, of course. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.